Having bought an Excite battery, you have put your faith on the most trusted battery brand from India. With more than 75 years of expertise in providing high-quality error-free captive power supply to household, industries, and automotive, Excite batteries come in various sizes and technologies. This particular film is an installation and maintenance manual for 2 volts tubular gel-based VRLA, also known as OPZV batteries and 2 volts flooded lead acid batteries which include OPZS, Plant E, Flat Pasted etc. Installation Procedure Any installation process begins with receiving the batteries from the factory. It is important to notice the packaging of the batteries first. All batteries are packed vertically on wooden skid. Top is protected with thermocol and hard board cover. The whole assembly is stretch wrapped and secured to the wooden skid with metal straps and transported in vertical condition only. Any loading, unloading or storage of batteries should always be done in vertical condition and rough handling should be avoided. Once received at the site, care must be taken for unloading of cases or pallets from the truck using mechanical hoists, portable cranes of forklifts to avoid pressure on the sides, jerks or tilts. The packing boxes received should be checked for quantity and damage as per delivery challenge, and if any issue, it should be mentioned in the receipt note of delivery challenge. While VRLA batteries should not be stored more than 6 months, the flooded batteries may be stored up to 24 months. During storage the VRLA batteries should be checked regularly and freshening charges provided after 3 months, if necessary as per the manual. For installation of the batteries, carry the batteries with all accessories near, the battery room using forklifts or convenient mechanical devices. Then use pellet trucks to take them inside the battery room. After cutting the metal strap, remove the stretch wrap plastic using a sharp knife and then remove the thermocol and hard board cover. Inspect the module tops for any mechanical damage or discrepancy. Carefully clean off the dust and packing material deposits from each unit, and accessory with clear soft cloth. Next the battery stand, has to be installed as per drawing. For that, sort the runners and legs over the floor of the battery room. And then fit the runners with the legs and install the battery stands as per drawings. Note the A1, A, 2, B1, B2 etc. markings as per the drawing provided while installing the battery stand. Now, for heavier high capacity batteries, install the batteries using chain pulley mechanism, over the stands and align them as per design layouts. The small and medium capacity batteries can be installed using hands only. At this stage it is important to note that tubular gel-based VRLA batteries can be placed in vertical as well as horizontal mode. But flooded batteries can be placed in vertical orientation only. The alignments should be such that all connectors and cables should be smallest. For VRLA batteries, after installation, first check the polarity of each cell, and correct the orientation, and then, connect the terminals as per the respective system drawings. For connection detailing, connectors corresponding catalog number, and the quantity of each type of connector, necessary for the completion of battery connection. Apply even coating of petroleum jelly to the bolts, nuts, washers, connectors and terminal pillars. Apply petroleum jelly to the terminals and connection points and tighten the bolt connectors firmly as per instructions in the manual. After bolting up the cells, smear petroleum jelly over nuts, bolts heads and washers. Ensure positive terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal of the next throughout the battery bank to leave the positive terminal of the first cell and negative terminal of the last, cell free for connecting to the charger. Finally ensure the correct sequence to avoid charging in the wrong direction as that will cause permanent damage to the battery bank. 
Connect the battery bank to the charger and charge for 6 to 12 hours in boost, CV, mode as per instructions in the manual under the monitoring of skilled personnel only. Once charging is complete, put the battery bank to use. For flooded lead acid batteries, once the batteries are installed, all connections that is inter-cell connections and connection with charger must be completed as per the manual and then acid filling is done. Each jerry can of acid is to be tested for specific gravity as per specification mentioned in the manual. Then fill acid between minimum and maximum levels of level indicator, continuously within 4 hours and then leave it idle for 12 hours to cool down the temperature of the battery bank to ambient temperature. Next charge for 3 to 4 days as per recommendation with monitoring by skilled and experienced manpower to avoid permanent damage of the battery. The completion of the charge can be known when the minimum ampere hour input is given, the voltage and the specific gravity is constant in three consecutive readings and all the cells should gas freely and vigorously. Next connect the entire battery bank to resistive load to discharge the batteries and then immediately recharge them as per prescribed voltage. Finally adjust the acid level and specific gravity of the acid as per the IFC manual, and put the battery bank to commissioned use. Specific do's and don'ts. Ensure the number of boxes received as per invoice. Check each box or wooden pallet before and after unloading at the receipt site. In case of any damage or discrepancy, immediately report to the local sales or marketing team. Handle batteries carefully during loading, unloading, moving, or storage to avoid pressure on the sides. Never lift the batteries using terminal pillars. Don't use scouring powders and solvents for cleaning leads as it can damage the plastic surface. Keep sparks, flames and lighted cigarettes away from battery room. Always avoid direct sunlight, but ensure well-lit battery room along with adequate ventilation at all times. Ensure ambient temperature range of minus 20 degrees to 50 degrees, maintaining an average of 35 degrees centigrade. Adequate space should be available for the battery room with a minimum of 1 meter wide aisle, in the front of the battery bank for working purpose and minimum of 150 millimeters between the back end of battery bank and wall. Ensure floor leveling to avoid undue stress in the terminals. Installation of battery banks should be as per approved layout drawing without any deviation. Contact local sales or marketing team if layout is missing. Shortest and optimal size cables should be used, and tight connections must be ensured before switching on, using insulated tools. Never work on the battery bank unless main battery leads are disconnected. Avoid short circuit by bridging the terminals with spanner while tightening terminal nuts and bolts. Never remove or damage vent valves. Attend to weak cells immediately. Never discharge a battery cell below the recommended voltage. Always use charger as a medium and never connect batteries directly to electrical sockets. Maintenance Battery bank needs to be inspected regularly for the terminal voltage and temperature of each mono block and compared with previous readings. Look for hot cells or any other abnormalities. C10 discharge and recharge should be carried out on annual basis. Records to be maintained for all inspections as per guidelines given in manual and specially on emergency or accidental discharges. If the voltage of any block is found lower than 2.12 volts, the battery bank must be immediately charged. In case of reduced backup or premature failure, it should be communicated to the manufacturer for further advice. Maintain clean surrounding. Clean only with wet cloth without using any kind of solvents. Always keep connectors, pillars and bolted connections covered with petroleum jelly. The best performance is always obtained when due care is taken of the battery banks on regular basis and ignorance is avoided for inspections and maintenance activities. In case of any undesirable or unmanageable issues, kindly contact the technical support of Exide directly.